In this video, I'd like to show you the six steps that I follow to go from a software idea to a final product that I'm making money from. And the product I'm making is a learning platform for those that want to learn code. And it's a full stack app where you can go over here, you can go into the courses and see what's available, buy whatever course you know you like, and uh, utilize the contents to hopefully make you a better coder. It has everything from like the code to the GitHub repository to chapters. It's a really cool app. And by the way, everything I did here came from my own experience. So if there's anything that you wanna talk about or you know, know more about, then let me know. I'm more than happy to talk about it. And if we head to the screen, uh, we can get started with the six steps. Now, the first thing I did to go from an idea to a production is to find a need. A lot of people tend to look for a business idea and think to themselves, what is Apple doing? What are these big businesses doing that I can also copy? However, if you want to do good in business, and I learned this the hard way through many bad experiences, look for problems that you can solve. That is all businesses. This lip gloss I have here, which is fruity, I'm not, Hey, this is good because I tend to have chapped lips and this is solving the problem of me having chapped lips. And in terms of my LMS platform, I don't like any learning platform for code right now other than maybe like Fireships platform. And I wanted to build a learning platform for those that want to learn code. There's a problem and I am solving it. And this might be the most important thing because you can build the best application out there. It could be literally the best application ever, but if there's no need for it, if no one wants your product, then how are they gonna buy it? So how you find a need is actually quite simple. Instead of looking for what people would love, because you're probably looking for something, oh, I'm gonna build an app and people are gonna love it, right? Instead, think of what people hate and build the thing to solve that problem. So for example, look for terms such as I hate, I don't like, oops, I don't like, annoying, or overall just complaints. And why I'm saying to look for these dislikes is that once you find the solution to their problem, like humans hate problems, they want them solved, then people will really pay a lot of money to get that problem solved. And once you realize that business is about solving needs and getting really good at that, you can really do anything. It's, it's, it's crazy. So again, find the hate, find something that people find annoying, and then we can get into the next step, which is solving that need. So in this step, we went from finding a need that people hate, you know, something that they find annoying, and now it's time to figure out a way to, to build the thing that they could use. Basically, find the solution to their, oops, to their problem. And again, I'm sorry to keep using this example, but it is what I'm building, but in my application, I just dislike so much how many YouTubers say they you know they're giving you like a Python course. That's a very big thing in the coding space. If you know any of the influencers at this at the top, they're always selling basic Python courses for like $400. And I think that that's annoying and not good. And I think that's a big problem. So what I'm doing and what I did was I found a need, which I hated. I hated the fact that they're doing that. And I also hated the fact that there's no good platform for that. And I find, and I'm solving that need through, in our example, building out the platform and figuring out a way on how to build that. So typically here's where you'll also maybe wanna learn to code because you need to. But if you do know how to code, now it's time to like pick a tech stack, lay out everything you need, look at how much everything is gonna cost, just looking at everything on how you can solve that need. And planning out the software, I actually made a video on, so uh, I'll leave that somewhere. But for now, we just know that we have the need that we are trying to solve. And the second thing is to solve and find a way to solve that need. Now, the third thing I did was build out the MVP. Everyone knows what MVP is now, which is a very good thing, uh, but if you don't, it's basically building a minimal viable product that people can use in your application. Basically, build out what's important. Build out the very basic features that people could find useful and uh, build it as fast as possible. And actually, this is one of the steps that I kind of messed up on. I went straight into building for production and it really held me back in the long term because what happens, right, is let's say you are trying to build this platform like I am, like this is what I did. And if you're trying to build the perfect app right away, firstly, you're going to spend a lot of time on things that 
don't matter. And secondly, you're going to build something that you don't know will work. Like I'm not going to name any names, but I know a decent amount of people that have spent 10, 11 months on applications that are very shitty, don't have a need, and I don't think anyone will use. And it's because they did not firstly build the MVP and test it out with people uh, at the basic level. And we'll talk about testing in, a, in the next section, but build out your MVP. And what an MVP could look like is it's going to be ugly. It's going to be slow. It's going to be bad. OK, those you should expect with an MVP. But the main thing you're trying to get out of here is to see if there is a need. Oops. You need to know if people want your product so that you can actually build the product in the first place. And usually an MVP could take anywhere from like one week because sometimes people are just very talented and they already have like a semi product ready to six, seven months. It really depends on the product you're building. It took me six, oh no, sorry, four months to get out my first sort of product and get it to testing. And if we go to my Twitter, I can kind of show you what I mean by this. I actually documented what my MVP looked like. And as you can see here, this is what the application looked like um, in its infancy. It looked disgustingly ugly. Like you can see, it's, it's very ugly compared to the final product, which is this. It looks awful, but it still was good enough to see if people wanted it. Again, the main thing here is not to have a fin final product to start making money yet, but I used this uh, section to see if people would want it, to see how simple it was to build the uh, need that we were trying to solve. And just get something out there, you know, get something out there, apply it uh, so that you're not bored to death and spend 10 months on a product that no one knows about. Now, the next thing I did was to get the MVP in the eyes of people. And here's where a lot of us tend to either mess up on or quit, because I think that a lot of us coders that are also entrepreneurs are of the shy type and we don't want to get our product in front of people uh, because we're afraid to get judged or get ridiculed by people. And this is what I'm doing right now. Like, um, although the UI and everything is done and most of the product is done, um, here's where I am just giving the product out for free. Literally, I am going to give out a course, some tutoring sessions for free for the sole reason, guys, not to lose money or to let people like me, but just to see what people think of the product so that I can fix it in different areas. For example, right, I showed the platform to my Discord server before anyone knew about it, and multiple people told me that I should add a live call session to my tutoring thing. Like basically to give one-on-one -on -one tutoring, um, they said you should add something where people could like book a live session in the platform, kind of like Google Meet, but in the in your own platform. And it's things like that, that you gain insight into what people find valuable, what they want and what they will pay for. And I've messed up in this uh, sense as well, uh, is that we hide the product and we're afraid that because it's not perfect, that people will not like it or they will think it's terrible. That's never the case. People are very curious. And especially if your audience is a bit older, you know, not like of the way younger age, they're more understanding, especially if you're giving it out for free. Give it to people, lose money on it if you can. Just let people gain an idea of what the product is. Let them use it and give feedback in replacement of the product. And again, this is uh, where I'm like kind of getting out of now, but it is so important and I beg you to just trust me on this, use it, it's so valuable and you'll thank yourself later because you will build better features for people, you will remove features that people don't need and you don't need to waste time on them anymore and you'll have a final product that people will love. And because we got the MVP out there and we know what people like and don't like, now it's time to polish the app. Essentially, here's the part where a lot of people tend to do before the MVP, but basically use what people liked, so use what people liked, and don't use what people didn't like, okay? Hope that makes sense. In addition, here's where you're gonna do your best with obviously like the UI, the speed of your application, the functionalities, you're obviously running tests. Overall, building a final product that will be in the eyes of the average consumer that will be paying for your product. And of course, here's where it will take up the most of your time because you are building a final product. And uh, in my case, for my application, it took me around, I'd say three months 
to build the final product that I think people will use. And by final product, I just mean a working case that's almost done. Like this is deployed, but people are not using it obviously because it's not released. Um, but you know, here's where I'll have like examples, you know, the UI looks great in my opinion here. I still need to work on it. And you can see here, it's just working chapters and search functionalities and stuff like that, that go into a good application. And the final aspect that I followed to go from an idea to the production is of course the production, AKA the release of the product. Here's where your app will be public and a great little nugget that I highly recommend you do is quite obvious. It's so just advertise it. Use social media is a really good one, but in general, try your best to let people know that your product is out there. And I'm going to say this, but give away stuff for free. What I'm doing right now is I'm showing you how to go from an idea to a production, right? This is something free. This is content for free that is giving value to people. People like value. And if you can provide something to people for free, they will be very appreciated of it. And they will be more likely to purchase the stuff from you. Not because you're some slimy salesman, but because you're a good person that provided value to them. And naturally as humans, when someone gives us value, we're more likely to think that what they're selling will be valuable as well. Again, get it in the eyes of people. I can't explain how important this is. And if you want a really good book on this, which I highly recommend, this is a book by Alex Hermosi, who is in it, my favorite entrepreneur. And it's a book that I think every uh, entrepreneur should read. It teaches you how to get people to buy your stuff and to get eyes on your product. And once again, if people don't know that your product exists, how will they buy it, right? You can have the cure to cancer for God's sake, but if they don't know it exists and it's out, they cannot buy the thing. So again, in an outline, we are finding a need that we need to solve. Look for complaints. That's a really good way. Then we are solving that need and we're finding out how to build that need that we're solving. In our case, we're building a learning platform to solve the need of bad learning platform and scammers. Then we build out the MVP that will be ugly and not good at all, but still for the sake of just building something fast. And then in the fourth step, we're taking that MVP and we are getting it in the eyes of our future users for free, just to know what people hate and dislike. And then once we have it in the eyes of our future buyers, we will polish the application based on their requests. In my example, I'm adding a live feature so that I can talk to my own clients. And finally, we are releasing the product once we polish the app and we are advertising through free content online, advertising, advertising and reading books on advertising because I know that a lot of us are a, are not really good at this because we're coders first and not entrepreneurs, but we still need to do it because how else are people going to buy it? But yeah, that is how I went from an idea to a production. Again, these are steps that I followed and I will be using for all my apps that I will be releasing, but I just wanted to give you an insight into what it's like to do so. And in my opinion, this is the main idea of what it's like. Of course, there are intricacies like finding motivation, being, you know, anxious and stuff like that throughout the whole process. But if you can just follow this blueprint, uh, you will be okay. And you will have a final product that works because you will have gone through the trenches with this product. You know, you will have known for sure that there's a need for it. People want it and are willing to pay for it. If you want to join the discord server where we have everything from a community of like-minded individuals helping each other with code and also uh, people starting businesses and just a great community, then I will leave the discord server down below. And of course, as usual, I'll leave the free resources like the web developer roadmap down below. Happy coding. Good luck. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.